Hi everybody, welcome back to Kona. That's right, we're, we're back once again in, um, in Quebec. We're out here in Quebec and um, we're in the Bedard household uh, where we left off last time, uh, if you remember. Did I act? No loose change in the cracks. Okay, I think that's the last thing I needed to look at in the Bedard household. Um, I mean, we haven't really looked at... Hey, there's a ball on the ground here. I didn't notice that either. Okay. The Bedard house is pretty creepy. I mean, that kid is looking pretty creepy. Uh, it's very dark down there as well. We found out that um, the female Bedard um, might have had an affair and had a, had a child as a result of said affair. Um, but that's about all we found. Otherwise... A bit of a bust, I would say. Uh, so we came to this place. So there's another place. There's two more places down the road. Looks like a, there's like a radio tower and a picnic bench down there. And then, of course, there's like a million places up and around the lake here. Lac Atamipec. Uh, which, of course, is a very famous lake. And, of course, the word lac is the French uh, for the English word lake. Anyway. Let's head out here, just in case there's anything out here. It doesn't look like there's much out here, it's gotta be said. It is looking... ...pretty bad. It's like, pretty empty. It's pretty cold. Okay. Bedard's house, once again. Okay, so... The Bedard house. Now, what house was it where there was a key inside, like, a little, like, uh, thing? Uh, like, a little, um... You know, what you would call it. We got another key though. We got a key from in here. Something to do with the kid being in love with like, um, like the Blaze kid. Oh, it must have been the Blaze house, right? It had to have been. Okay, we might have to go back to the Blaze house. That's okay. Anyway, perfect. Let's get in the truck. Let's try to stay warm. L luckily for us, this truck just has tons of gas because we fueled up at the uh, Hamilton Depot. Okay, let's go down to this next house down the road. Uh, we have to get back to the road, of course, um, and, then, and then go down. And we'll carry on our investigation of this really, really creepy... Which way do I have to go here? Um, okay, yeah, I want to go, like, down this way. Is this the way back? This can't be the way back, right? Am I going the right way here? Fuck. Yeah, okay, I'm going the right way somehow. Okay. I'm going the right way. We're gonna go investigate this last house that's down here. Whoa, man, the snow is... The snowstorm is bad. I mean, I cannot see shit. Carl is really struggling with his, his vision here. Oh, okay, what does this say? This is, of course, 1556. 1556 Manistan Avenue. It's, um, it sounds like maybe an advertising agency might be here, but come on, let's face it. It's probably not the case. Whose house is this? It's the Roi house. Perfect. Okay. These guys have come up time and time again. Now, let's see. It looks like the Roi house has undog. Maybe it's that little wolf that keeps running around and leaving tracks and stuff. Or, you know, maybe it isn't. Looks like there's a note on the door. It says... On a pris la fuite. Ça devient trop dangereux. À Manistan Nord, on sera plus nombreux. Plus en sécurité. Um, so they've taken flight. It's become too dangerous. Um, in the north of Manistan, um, there will be more of us. And we'll be more secure that way. We fled. It was getting too dangerous. More people live in North Manistan. It will be safer there. Jean Roy. Or Jean Roy. However you want to pronounce it. It's up to you. It's it's fine. Okay. Anyway. Let's go in here. Uh, let's get our flashlight out. It was out. a classic Canadian house. Yeah. Except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. Oh, crap. You know what? I just realized... Fucking, we need some fucking firewood. Every house has to have a fucking supply of logs outside of it, though, right? Otherwise, I call in bullshit. Every Canadian house has a supply of fire logs. Like, they have to have it. It's a, it's a bylaw. I don't think you're even allowed to live without it. Maybe it's this side? 
I mean, this is crazy. They have to have a storage area or something somewhere. It's, it's too cold. Okay, we do not have the key for this side door, which is kind of weird. Maybe we'll find it inside here. Maybe it's, they've stored a log inside the house and I just missed it. I mean, this is cr You know what? Here. My inventory is jam-packed full, though. What the hell can I do about this jam-packed inventory? Uh, can I put some stuff in the truck? I've got to be able to. Oh my fucking god, I can. Okay, let's deposit a couple of things into the truck, such as an empty gas can. Um, steaks? Maybe not. Let's hang on to the lantern just in case. Uh, what else can we put in here? A flare, some wa a water bottle, painkillers, a wired magnet? Why the fuck do I have... Okay, the empty gas can, though, is now in the truck. Oh, you can't see it in the back of the truck, though. I can't have, like, a... That is awesome, by the way. I did not realize that that was a thing. Okay, let's pick up these fire logs. Perfect. Let's start up a fire. Great. Now the investigation can continue. Uh, where's the light in this place? Where's the light switch? Ah, here it is. I found it. Okay. Power on. Hello? Hello? Okay. This is great. We need these. It's good to light up the fires everywhere you go, right? Because then you can stay warm and you could do a really thorough investigation. Like, we'll have to here because, look, there's a note here. It says, The Fantasy, page one. Mathieu had yet to add murderer to his curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones, and taking the life of a flesh and bone individual who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate, read held the promise of exhilarating sensations. Unlike Raskolnikov, it wasn't about axing an old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory. Not at all. Mathieu just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple, horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind. Like most people, his desires ran quite wildly. So he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He pondered using a rifle or a knife, assassinating a young girl or an old man. He tried to focus on practicability. Practicability? Uh. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bodybuilding wasn't exactly Mathieu's strong suit. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He wasn't that eager to learn that spending the rest of his life in prison would be like. Some experiences carry just too high a cost to be worth it, really. Um, alright, well, I don't know what the fuck or who the fuck would write that, but call me alarmed. I mean, I, that's, uh, that is alarming, t to say the least. Okay, so these people have fled to North Manistan, uh, where there's more people, apparently. Oh, there's some matches here. We should probably pick up fucking... No, come... Yes. Okay, seven matches. That's got to be useful for something. There's some bread here. Not allowed to have the bread. We can fill up our bottle. Okay, our water bottle is full now. This is good. Our inventory is full as well. Maybe we can store, like, some of our water bottles and stuff in the... Wow! Holy crap! Talk about living like a king! Jeez. Okay, let's get this on so that we can... Did somebody leave the light on in the bathroom? Wow, okay, and somebody has a box just filled with toilet paper here, too. Okay, is something gonna just jump out and scare the shit out of me in these houses? Because I really am not ready for that. There's a lot of documents and stuff laying around here, like, what's this? The Fantasy, page two. It was around that time that Mathieu met Beatrice. Of mediocre beauty at best, the girl with her distinctive features, cheeks covered with large pox-like freckles, Jew nose, oily forehead, tired but vibrant eyes, shaded red hair, slender as a child body, chirpy laugh, you name it, was the very image of innocence. That happened to be precisely the kind of victim Mathieu was picturing in his mind, though. Nice. One night, as he was contemplating the ceiling from his bed, he swore to himself again and again, I'll kill her. His dreams were later filled with images of the imminent crime. He had come up with a simple enough plan. One fine evening, he would visit her place to become familiar with the area's intricacies and feel closer to the impending murder, to slowly dig into Beatrice's thoughts, desires, dreams, and abilities. This way, he would be able to get a concrete sense of what his sinister deed would be stripping away from the very fabric of life. The whole thing would take two days, a week at most. Jesus Christ. This is some dark shit. I mean, I'm, 
I don't know why I read this. Hey, look. Conapoli. Conapoli. You win if you pass go. Nice. Okay. So that was a, a board game of Conapoli. Wow. We just got some ammo out of a... Wow. Look at this. Is pretty tight, isn't it? I mean, holy crap. Uh, Joe Dassin. Nice. Okay. And here's the third page of the fantasy. The first time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpectedly revealed her troubled origins to Mathieu. She was adopted at the age of four, and recalling her former life still gave her a hard time. She played the piano in so graceful a manner that people often thought she may be the natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. She confided to him so profoundly that Mathieu couldn't get enough, coming back every night to learn every single thing of what would come out of that delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. Every night, he reflected on what the death of Beatrice would mean in terms of losses to human humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or of her piano melodies, the compulsive tapping of her long index finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts, or any other little thing, it didn't matter. Everything would indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumbers indeed. Then days became weeks, and before he knew it, it was Mathieu's turn to throw his secrets at her, his hopes, his cries of despair as if throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. Fuck me. Jesus Christ. Do we... Look at this picture as well. Fucking holy crap. What a weird place. Is this page a murderer's diary? Four. Oh. Paul's detective training compelled him to write some excerpts down. Okay, the fantasy sort of page four. Could give life to such a bizarre tale. Really? The two lovebirds were still going at it seven months later, though, confiding fears and desires alike near the fireplace several days a week. The populace took notice, and wounding words eventually found their way to Mathieu's ear, prompting him to take action to prove his gentlemanship. He had to ask Beatrice's hand in marriage. He would have more than enough time to kill her later. Today, when Mathieu stares at the motionless ceiling, just like he did 20 years ago, he still wonders what he would be removing from existence by slitting Beatrice's throat, what he would be depriving his children of. Then, as if soothed by his fantasy, he gently drifts off, smiling the night away. All right, well, I feel very uncomfortable being inside this place right now. There's Not a, a single weapon was left. They're all, all, of were gone. all of the guns are gone. There was a little bit of ammo left, which I guess is somewhat reassuring. Did I just fucking hear something? Is this the guy who wrote it? The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps wow. some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. Pfft, I mean, that a fucking of Wilfred novel. In his youth, Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. He looks like a wild... I mean, he has, uh, like, a gun rack and stuff, The photograph right? was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. Oh, yeah. The couple seemed to be very good friends. Where was that snap? Like, he here? Here? Huh. Fuck me, it's really creepy in here all of a sudden. Like, uh, the atmosphere of this house has just... completely overcome me now. It's, it's awful. Simone de Beauvoir. Claude Lévi-Strauss. Hannah Arendt, Roland Barthes. Carl was surprised by the literature filling this liberal-leaning bookcase. Could yeah. there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far-off land? Well, no, but I mean, I think this guy is a bit of a murdidly erdler, though. Just we one more move and White is checkmated. Game over. It seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. This is a common theme in this game, isn't it? Every chessboard we find, somebody was about to win. Get me out of here, jeez. Oh, God, I bitterly regret coming to this house. My God. Okay, let's get into the safety of the car. If anything happens to us, at least the car is going down too. Um, not very often nowadays that you see a car that is the color brown. I don't even know if that's a factory color anymore. Is it even possible? Uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, anyway, let's check the map. There's another house just down the road here that we can go check out. And then we have a whole bunch of other houses to check out too. It's just a lot of house checking out. Oh, Christ. 
Don't get out of the car, for Christ's sake, Carl. We need to look at our journal, okay? We need to look at our journal and see what's going on here. Okie dokie. So, um... Hamilton's murder. Has, have we gotten any further on this one? Hamilton's murder? No, Hamilton's murder, one of three. Wait, two of three. Okay, Gilles Lachance went to the doctors. Now I need to know if the doctor saw Gilles. I know how to lead the perfect investigation. Blackmailing Hamilton. More likely, could Giselle have convinced her husband to kill? After all, her docile partner seemed to obey this strong-minded woman. Okay, Hamilton's murder, we're no closer on now. Further north... Uh, we need to get some caribou. I haven't found it yet. The hunt. We're still working on this. We're trying to find, like, some more stuff about it. And we have all the bios of people. We have the bedards now. We're starting to fill this up, actually. Wilfred Qua. Whatever they were scared of, their escape got complicated. Looks like they went through the forest. While escaping, the Roise took a detour to see the Blaze family. From there, Wilfred and Alexandra went out looking for Gilles Lachance. Okay. This is all good. We have the Bedards here. We have uh, Mary J and Mary P. Um, Bedard. Alexandra Blaze is here. We got Louise Blaze. We got Martin Blaze. Old Rosaire. Um, okay. Perfect. And all of my my Pikachus as well. I've taken many Pikachus on my adventures. Okay. Right. We carry on then. We carry on. For Christ's sake. Oh, God, the Roi house was awful. Jesus, the worst house in the whole game. Man, that made me feel really uneasy. That story was just fucking dark and weird, and good lord. Okay, now, which way do I have to go? I have to carry on down this road to Menestan Suit. Okay, you know what? Let's get the fucking radio on, because holy crap. I'm about to shit my pants. It's getting really quite tense now. Okay, so anyway... We're in South Atim Atamipec now. Uh, how far away are we from this place? It's just coming up down the road. Did we stop here at the start of the game or not? I can't remember. I mean, maybe we could just drive home. Just get the fuck out of here. Like, screw the investigation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, that, I quite literally mean that, so I hope you do know what I'm saying. Okay, where's this house, though? It's, like, up around here somewhere? fuck is this house? How do we get up to it? It's like beyond a wall, it seems. What is that noise? What was that fucking weird noise? It sounded like a beeping noise. Did you hear that? The fuck? Oh, okay. It's a tower, I see. Can I get up to it? Am I allowed to jump up rocks? I'm brute forcing my way through this whole this whole area now. How the hell do you get up there? There's got to be a little path or something, right? It's a tower. And there should be a little, like, cabin or something next to it. Ah, uh, fuck it. Maybe I did go up it. Maybe this that's the one I went up at the start. Okay, fine. Let's go back this way, then. We're nice and warm inside the car. Uh, we want to go all the way back, and then we want to hang a left. Whoops! Sorry! <laughs> uh, geez, I'm a bit drunk. Uh, and cold. I'm, I'm cold and drunk. Which, you know, sh one, one should cancel out the other in either case, but it, it seems to still cause me to, you know, crash into fucking that fence. There's a lot of fence here. Maybe like a, maybe an unrealistic amount of fencing going on here. Like, nobody would ever have that much fencing, I don't think. But whatever, we'll see. Um, we definitely went to all of these other houses, right? Like, I went to this house in here. I'm sure I did. Um, okay. If I haven't, though, we'll come back to it. I'm pretty sure... Pr oh, look! It was that! That was the beeping again! Or was it squeaking? Was it my seat squeaking? Maybe it was my seat squeaking. You know, like the shock absorbers on my car are, like, not too great. At, and, and maybe now my seats are, like, squeaking a lot. I'm not sure. Okay, so we want to head up this way. Okay, shit, the general store. Yeah, okay. And then we want to go this way. 
That's right. And then we want to go down here. Okay, there's a whole bunch of houses down here that we haven't been to yet. Some of them we have definitely been to, though. Uh, but some of them we need to check out. Because we need to find out more about what's going on here. Uh, we have to find some more crossbow arrows as well. The ones that are, like, uh, you know, on fire or whatever. That's also an important thing to find in this game, it turns out. Okay. There's a first aid station in here, apparently. Have we been up here yet? We had to have been up here, right? Whose house is this? There's no way I just drove past this and didn't see it, right? Oh, well, we're about to find out. Okay. Have we noticed anything? Dr. Bro Beaupre's clinic! Okay, here we go! This is where Gilles Lachance came. Was it Gilles Lachance? Yeah, it was Gilles Lachance. Okay, he came here for sure. Okay, let's check his mailbox. There's a key in here. It's a key to the clinic. Let's check under the mat as well. Okay, so he decides to hide his key in the, in the mailbox rather than under the mat. Okay, is there any sinister freezing going on in here? Probably. Let's just... In spite of Dr. Beaupre's goodwill, the place didn't look much like a physician's office. No. It could easily be mistaken for a sewing shop. A sewing shop? The hell? The heck is that supposed to mean? A sewing shop? Okay, it's dark and creepy as fuck in here as well. Holy shit. My god. Okay, well listen. We found Beaupre's clinic. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue investigating it next time, okay? Right, I'm gonna warm up by the fire, and next time we'll come back and we'll do the Beaupre's clinic, and we'll find out what's going on in Kona. Man, this game is very strange, but really good so far. Honestly, I am really enjoying it. I, I'm looking forward to seeing um, how it develops, how the story develops and stuff. Uh, and it feels like we're getting somewhere now, so at least that's something. Alright, well, as usual, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time!